So, hello guys, you are welcome to Mosdi Academy and uh, today we are looking into electrochemistry. Like I said, these type of videos are self-explanatory because I actually take my time to make out uh, the PDF and make it as simple as possible using different resources. And uh, why I'm doing this is to make sure I take all the courses. So in this video, we have uh, 10 point chapter 10. We have 10.0 to 10.4, which I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. I have actually made them simple in such a way that I believe even if you are doing any type of examination, so if it is chemistry and you want to study a particular course which I'll be taking, it will really help you to understand how it is being done. So admin, let's check out the outline of the courses and the scope of the topic. The first one, yeah, like I said, this is 10.0, electrochemistry aspects that deals with what? electrical energy and what and the chemical energy so we are going to relate it talking about both cell 10.1 which is what we want to do today is going to talk about galvanic cell i hope you can see galvanic cell from here so 10.3 is when we we'll talk about the equation we call the next equation that is our so and 10.3 we focus this mainly on what the electrolytic cell two type of electrochemistry are both the galvanic cell which is also known as voltaic cell this is what we are focusing on today and the second type is our electrolytic cell so in 10.2 we focus more on the next equation and these are very common in jupeb and uh, igma type of questions for people that are based in, uh, in nigeria here yeah. and igcs we also test you on the next equation so on this 10.1 we have next admin on this step one, we are going to talk about next place we are going to talk about place next now, we are talking about uh, under the voltage cell, which is also called galvanic cell. These are all the areas I want to cover today. So, and if I'm covering all these areas today, I'm going to be very fast. But like I said, it is self-explanatory. I've took my time out to arrange them in such a way, even if you're a beginner, you are going to have a good knowledge of time. And I don't have time. So, I'll talk about definition. You must have a definition about redox, oxidation in terms of electron transfer, reduction, how to identify reduction reaction and oxidation reaction and determination of what standard electromotive cell or electromotive electropotential of a galvanic cell which is a cell that has what that constitutes the chemical energy in itself which is converted to electrical and i can also talk about how to draw simple voltaic or galvanic cell i'll talk about the operation of the voltaic cell they are called in primary cells they can be they cannot be retried i'll talk about how to write half cell equation and the connection with the importance of saw bridge. I talk about overall equation, how to calculate the EMF, and how to introduce the standard hydrogen electrode. So the cell notation is also going to be discussed about. Let's see the next one, which I'm still going to talk about. Yes, and also focuses on definition of she standard hydrogen electrode and standard reduction electrode. Then I'll talk about different methods we use. I focus only on one method, which is popular everywhere you go. I will leave the other method on how to determine the standard and the condition necessary for standard electric potential. And I'll also talk about how to compare the strength, talking about reducing property, the higher the positive of what? The EMF, the higher the what? Oxidizing power, and the higher the what? Negative value, the higher the reducing power. All these I'm going to talk about under this slide. So, next one I mean. So, let's start with the definition. Like I said, it is self-explanatory. I took my time out to make sure this is well cooked. So the study of chemistry that deals with what relationship between chemical change and electrical change is called electrochemistry. May I just uh, say I want to start with that. So let's see this. So this is the definition we need to electrochemistry. And there are two types. The first one, which is what I want to talk about, voltaic, which is also known as the galvanic cell. And the second one, which we are going to talk about in 10.03, under the chapter 10, is called the electrolytic cell. Next one, I have 57 slides to talk about, so I have to increase my pace. Now, when we talk about uh, this particular topic of uh, electrochemistry and understanding different type of cell, which we call the voltaic cell or the galvanic cell, you have to understand the concept of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is what we call gain of electron. So we can say this is gain of electron our reduction is loss of electron now there are two cells we are still going to talk about how it has been made so we have two cells we have zinc solid that is dipped into what zinc solution and we have also copper 
which is also dipped into its solution. Now, what we always focus on, which I'll talk more about, is for you guys to know that uh, the one that is more electropositive will be at the left hand side, and the left hand side is the side of the handle. Please note that. So, whereby the other side, which is uh, the one that is least electropositive, will be right at the right hand side, and the right hand side is the cathode. So, there is a popular saying that says, uh, Oxidation is loss, oil leak, and reduction is gain. So that is a point that you can keep in mind. So cathode, you said uh, uh, at the anode, oxidation takes place. At the anode, oxidation is for anode. Just specify it and leave like this. And uh, reduction is for what? Cathode. So that is just the simple thing I'll talk about. And about the explanation I've given here, loss of electrons means what? As a loss of electron, oxidation number increase. Oxidation is defined as loss of electron, and reduction is defined as what? Gain of what? Electron, term of electron transfer. Please, increase in oxidation number, you should keep that in mind. Now, let's check how this equation is very written. Now, an element in its free state adds oxidation number to be zero. Now, the loss of electron is for oxidation is loss, Reduction is gain. Please keep that in mind. So look at this now. Zinc is zero here. Then from here it has turned to what two? Increase in oxidation number. We say it has what oxidized. Look at copper. Copper two ion lost what gain two electron and became what is zero. From plus two, that is the charge on it, to what a free state solid is definitely going to be zero. It has what reduced oxidation number. So let's read that please so that we can be fast. No time to be talking too much. The loss of electron is called oxidation. Oxidation number increases. The oxidation number of zinc increases from 0 to 2. As you can see, zinc is a reducing agent. Now, any element that got itself oxidized is called a reducing agent. And the one that got themselves reduced is called an oxidizing agent. The opposite is for this. Now, the question is, how does this happen? Why is it that now we notice that what zinc is the one we are writing at the left hand side and the copper is the one we are writing at the right hand side that is the most important question we want to answer under this and how to write the equation so we'll do that in the next slide let's see that next one please now slide 8 introduce you to what we call electrode now if you talk about uh, if you talk about uh, let's see something now now if we talk about uh, fine. now if we talk basically about what we call uh, the anode cathode, whatever that we are doing. This is page eight. Follow this. So let's see. Okay, I'm now on page nine. If we have uh, this, sorry guys, I'm coming. Just a minute. Fine. So now, if we talk about redox reaction, there is a particular thing we call electrode. Now, electrode is defined as object that conducts electricity between a cell and its surrounding. A very good example is this diagram we have. If we have two electrodes, there are two electrodes in electrochemistry, which is called the anode and the cathode. Just like what we said, we said oxidation takes place at the anode and reduction takes place at the cathode. Oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is a gain of electron. Oxidation is increase in oxidation number and what reduction is the other one. Now, a simple cell is drawn here we are still going to talk more about that, but let it be known that an electrode is just what acts as the conductor, object that acts, that conduct, is an object that enter into a solution and they are split up by it. When you apply it to them, they split up. When they split up, so they tend to conduct electricity between the cell and the cell. Now, let's see a very good example for you to see what we are talking about. This is a simple cell, as you can see. Between this simple cell, there are two compartments, which we call the electrode, the cathode and the what? And the anode. That is what we are talking about, the cathode and the anode. So the cathode and the anode combination are called the electrode. You can see after we dip them here, you can see when it is supplying into this thing, then they become what? Molten, they become what they react. They have been what they have been changing state here. So when they are what they conduct electricity, when it is passed or electricity is passed through them, they tend to dissolve in what in the what in the solution because each of these compartments has its own what, solution. So let's go to the next one. Two type of electrode, anode and cathode. Now type of electrode are also classified again in terms of what uh, their activeness. 
When I say activeness, there are some electrodes that take part in what in reaction, and there are some that do not take part in reaction. I said this particular thing, I said explanatory on it on the way I've done it. So those that take part in reaction are called active electrodes. And those that do not take part in the action are called inactive electrode, basically called inert electrode in junior classes. I know you guys have studied inert electrode. Inert. Inert means what they don't what you know inert gases. They have completed their octet shape. So what we are talking about, a very good example of inert electrode is graphite and platinum. They don't take part what in the action, they only act as space. Please note that it does not involve in reaction. And those ones that involve in reaction. Very good example are zinc, copper, iron to mention with few. The next one, please. Thank you very much. Now, electrolyte. Now, what do we call electrolyte? Now, we've talked about electro electrochemistry definition, electro definition, then what we call electrolyte. Now, the liquid itself. Now, it's not only going to be in liquid form. Let me put it in here. There are species that can conduct electricity in liquid and also what in liquid form or in what aqueous form solution so electrolyte we have electrolysis or electrochemistry electrode and electrolyte so they can either be a pure compound or they can sometimes be an aqueous solution that is the that why i said the liquid at the outset was that it is what we dipped our particular electrode into those materials that conduct either in liquid state or in aqueous form are called electrolyte Electrode are compartment, anode and cathode. Electrolyte are that particular liquid, for example, or aqueous salt. Look at this now. Pure compound like H2SO4, uh, like water, I said H2SO4, it's like molten salt. This is salt, this is water. So this salt can also act like what? An electrolyte because salt can what? Can actually what? Conduct. Now, aqueous salt can be in terms of a sodium chloride, and you can also have a sodium surface. You know when you say aqueous? Solid to aqueous, that means that they have been deep in what into a solute solution. So, please, all these are very simple, but they are very important, and that is what I'm trying to make you show you the next one. Thank you, Admin. Now, I said we are dealing with galvanic cell, which is also called voltaic cell. Now, we want to talk about the composition of galvanic cell and uh, some understanding about some other things. They what some characteristics you can keep in mind. The first one is to know to for you to understand is what one thing about galvanic cell they are called battery. So they are primary cell which cannot be recharged a little bit of physics they convert chemical energy towards electrical so that's the difference between electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell so an example of electrochemical cell is your galvanic cell or the voltaic cell and they have a, what they use spontaneous energy to generate what electrical energy all batteries contain voltaic cell next one i mean we we'll soon get to the real work of today all these are what? now components and operation of galvanic cell or the voltaic cell. Now, this is where you need to listen. Now, how do they operate? Now, we said we are going to have two different cells, two different metals. One will be at the left and one will be at the right. Now, we I use the example of zinc and uh, copper. Now, I said zinc is more electropositive than copper. Now, zinc electrode now will be dipped into a solution, it can be zinc sulfate. Please note that the solution can be anything, so zinc sulfate and copper also will be dipped into a solution, which is a copper sulfate I also want to use. You now when you dip something to solution, it is changing from this state is solid, now this is now what? A aqueous. Please listen, we are now getting to how it works. We want to talk about operation. Now, a very good illustration is shown by Admin here, which you can see. Now here we have two compartments, the anode is always the negative electrode and the cathode is the positive electrode. Oxidation takes place at the anode, reduction takes place at the cathode. Now, what happened is well, as we dipped zinc into its solution, we also what dipped what copper, the second one, into its what, solution, that is copper sulfate and zinc sulfate, respectively, as you can see from here. Now, having said that, we now connect the two cells together, look at the connecting rod with what we call a salt bridge, which we are still going to talk about. Now, this salt bridge has its own use. Yes, it, it acts its own, yeah, it's, it's cause what we call a kind of neutrality between the two cells. I'm still coming to that. And it also what brings about what continuity of what of the flow of charges. It doesn't allow charges to stop. Now, now look at this now. Here, what happened is what? 
after we contain when we connect them together by a salt bridge then we now place it what we now place a voltmeter or potentiometer or galvanometer in your physics you might have studied that to measure in what the potential what the potential different that is flowing from one cell to another so we are combining two different cells together in this format one compartment is anode and the other compartment is cathode bring them together by what a salt bridge which is what which is usually made of, of what potassium chloride potassium nitrate anything like that it's always what a, a kind of reaction that does not a kind of uh, connecting rod that does not actually take part in reaction but only cause what neutrality between them the next one that is 13 or 53 a very good example of what i just explained now in the clear picture thank you admin for producing this one now look at this now it's a very simple compartment electron will flow as you what dip zinc into a solution now you are deep, dipping zinc into what into a zinc surface so what happened is what zinc has been dipped here so the electron that flow from here the electron from the solution you know zinc has been reduced zinc solid is reduced then because you dip it, the electron will now flow from here. There are different ways in which electron flow. We have what in physics you might have studied that, but you don't need much of that. So as the electron flows from here to here, now what happens is what the concentration of copper two plus here is now higher because all the what zinc has dissolved in what zinc sulfate solution. So the electron flows from here, which is detected by photometer, and this is the connecting rod we are talking about, which is called the what the salt. Bridge. So the work of the salt bridge is just to connect two half cells together, and that is what we're talking about. So it's a very simple thing. So in, in here, we are saying the left hand side is the what is the anode, the right hand side is what is the cathode. So always keep it in mind that what left hand side is the anode, which is almost the most electropositive element, and the right hand side is cathode, which is the least electropositive element. The next one. Thank you. Now, what happens when zinc electro? What happens to zinc electro? What I just explained now, we can quickly read through it. Zinc metal anode is immersed in the solution. Zinc has more tendency to release electrons, and that is what happens. So, because of that, it will release through electricity. Zinc now is releasing through electron. That is that. And because of that, zinc is the negative electrode since it is a source of electrons. Is electron so zinc is negative electro because it releases it's more electropositive. The one that is more electropositive releases electron. So and because of that, oxidation takes place, of course, at that electro. Where does oxidation take at, at occur? It occurs at the end. So not at the next one. Thank you. Now zinc metal dissolve and is and the mass of zinc or electron, you can see what I said, decreases. Zinc is the one supplying the electron. So zinc. You write it like look at it. You have to be careful. Zinc. So zinc is solid, but when it was deep in what in solution, it is going to what release two electron. When it does that, so you have Z then two plus. You know that then plus uh, two E minus. That means it has given two electron in its solution. So what this one means? This one is no more solid. Is now what? So these are things you need to keep in mind. We move to the next. Now, now about the other one, the cathode, the anode is at the left, the cathode then, you should keep that now by now. The major thing I've said so far now is that when we have what, uh, a voltaic cell, which is called a galvanic cell, which is most battery, the way we call most battery, or the definition we give to all primary cells, we say they are contained what, of what, of two compartments, anode and cathode, they are joined together by what, a muslin bag, which is also called a salt bridge. This salt bridge behaves like what? A kind of balance to the what to the two cells. It's called what it it act like what it maintain balance, neutral neutrality between the cells. Apart from it, it's used to join them together. Having said that, zinc and copper is what I'm using as an illustration. The one that supply is the anode. The one that what that gain is the what cathode. Anode is at the left hand side. You know your left from your right, and the other one is at the right hand side. So the mass of zinc will decrease because it's the one supplying. Whereby the, the other one is gaining. Now that is when we want to write the reaction for the other one. You can see it is the opposite of what we've written. That one is like the cathode area now, copper. It is because there is a flow from the zinc, from the zinc plate. Now the electron, the zinc ion, has now more. The zinc ion 
has now moved into the compartment of copper. So what happened to copper is what? Copper solution, which is now in close, has increased. And because of that, you expect copper at that place to what? To gain acid. That is it. It has now gained two electrons because the electron flowing from zinc has now entered into copper and it has gained two electrons. It should be a straight line. I'm only writing that. So what you have here is what? From aqueous solution, it should now come to copper, which is now in solid. So it's just the opposite of what happened at the first one. You know the other one was from this to this because that one is the one supply, whereas this one is the one gain. So at cathode, you expect this. At anode, you expect the other one. That is what all this is all about. Next one, please. Thank you. Now, reduction of cause are this. Copper is deposited and we've talked about this. Next place. To save time, you have a long way to go. Now, salt break. Now, this is also what I've talked about. Now, let's quickly read through this. Contain a solution of a non-reacting ion. They don't react. Example of salt break, you can be asked is potassium chloride. I talked about it. Potassium triazonite K5 and sodium tetrosulfate 6. These are very good of what we, what, what we use as salt break. Salt break is also called a muslin bag. Yes, you can keep that at the back of your mind. Now the function is what? They maintain what? Electrical neutrality. I think I've talked about this. And they act as what? A wire that allows ions to flow and complete the circuit. If the salt bridge is not connected to the cell, the flow of electron from one point will stop and there will be no con continuation. But if this guy is not connected with the salt bridge, as the electron that is coming from this point reaches a particular point, it will stop. So it's because of this salt bit that allow what the what the flow to continue. And that is what they are trying to tell you here in the second use. It acts like a wire that allow ions to flow and complete the circuit. And you can see voltmeter, it will tell you the what the PD that is flowing within the circuit or within the connection. The next one. Thank you. Now the th how does this cell maintain its electrical neutrality? A very good example, you can see zinc is at the left side, which is anode, and right side, exactly what we've talked about, is the what? Is the copper. So what happens, zinc ion enter the solution, causing the overall reaction to have excess positive charge. Because as zinc is deep there, the ion of zinc will now be more, and because of the electron starts flowing. So chloride ion, now, we are using, now let me let you know something. So there are two compartments, let's quickly go into that. We have the anode, which is the negative electrode, and the cathode is now. Potassium chloride is the what? Composition of the, the salt bit we are using. So that you get all these things once and for all. If potassium chloride is the salt bit that we are using, when we ionize potassium chloride, everybody needs to be K plus and Cl minus. What happens in the solution is that Cl minus will move toward the compartment of the negative, which is anode. Whereby K plus will shift to this. So because of that, what we expect is the chlorine ions from the salt bit will move to the zinc house cell. And the what potassium we move to the what to the copper offset because copper is the one that is here. So what now happens is what the overall reaction will be balanced because of what the flow of electron from one point to, a, to the other. So because of that, there will be neutrality. You can see electrical neutrality is maintained because of the what effect of the salt bridge. The next one, 20 or 57. I have time. And this is a clear picture of all what we have been talking about. Votameter, this is the salt bridge which is made of KCL, it can be KNO3 and it can be NH2SO4 or K2SO4, anything can be used for that. So in as much, they can easily ionize. The reduction, please, by now, what I expect you to have gained, I told you, I said, I've made this thing with my admin, so easy to understand. Now we've learned about two compartments, anode and cathode. Anode is at the left, cathode is at the right. Reduction takes place at the cathode, then oxidation takes place at the Anode. Then we've talked about salt bridge. We talk about how we balance and cause what neutrality between the next reaction. So now we want to go into the next aspect 21. Let's hear what we want to talk about. So what happens if there is no salt bridge? I told you about that. It's simple. If there is no salt bridge, look at the electron that is coming from here. Now, as the electrons start or the zinc what the zinc ions start, the electrons start moving, the reaction will stop because the net increase in positive charge is not neutralized and that is what i've said before i said it should stop but because of the word salt bridge as a good example you can see here as the same rod dissolve excuse me the concentration of zn2 plus in the left beta increases because the zinc was deep into this 
Z then two pluses form. So the concentration, the concentration left in the beaker increases. The amount of concentration increases. The reaction stops because the net reaction in positive charge is not neutralized. So if something is not neutral, you know the meaning of neutral, as you are supplying positive charge, that should be what negative charge that will balance. It's talking about test for charges under your physics. So what we are trying to say is that the excess charge builder can be reduced by adding a salt base. So instead of excess charge, when there is excess charge, too much of excess charge in the particular reaction, you expect it to what the reaction to stop. Because if there is no other reward, reaction that is supplying. So if there is too much of excess positive charge and there is no negative charge, either it is being induced or any way, it will what lead to what they want the viral reaction to stop. So by connecting a salt bridge, the reaction continues. Next one, please. Now, the first example I'm going to talk about is how to write outside, which is the most one of the most important things we are here to do today. That is just a bit of introduction about the topic. Then how to know the symbol for salt bridge. Now when we want to symbolize salt bridge, we use double stroke. This is the symbol we use for salt bridge. Now, when we use single stroke, so we are talking about the phase of reaction. I always tell students in offline class, this is the phase of reaction. Reaction I write as RSN, if you are new to my classes. Now, if we want to know we are connecting two particular cells, I love it like this, we are connecting two particular cells, and because we are connecting two cells, now, let's go with yellow. Now, this is the first one, zinc solid. Now, after zinc solid was dipped into solution, it's what it's from what zinc aqueous said then two plus then copper gain somewhat gain some uh, electron from zinc so we have more of what copper copper two ion now from what reduced to form what to form this so now we want to match these two, two things together we write the first one zinc solid the face turned to what zinc said then two plus and it was connected with a salt bridge. We have, we have copper 2 plus, which is aqueous in one molarity. I will still talk about that. Was now what is now forming. So when we want to join them together, we use the sign of salt bridge. So this is talking about joining this particular one here. You are joining zinc and copper. Then you write the reaction. Now look at this because we have to take it. This is not, we are not here to rush too much. We are here for you guys to understand everything. So we have to take the patient a little bit. Arnold on the left cathode on the right, which we have talked about before. Anode is always on the left, cathode is also. When you are writing half cell reaction, anode must be on the left, cathode must be on the right. The next one is single phase represents the phase. I've talked about the phase boundary, whereby the double stroke represents the short bit. And I do tell people that if you talk about electrode, most time you can see that is why we need to work through this. Now most time electrode are always written at the end. It appears at the what at the at the end. It's always known that at the end it can be what appear at the far right and left of what. So if you want to write, if electrode is mentioned, you can write the electrode at the end like this. It is not a problem. And if you don't write it, it doesn't mean you don't have it. Please, you have to understand all this stuff. They are very important for you to keep at the back of our mind. The next one. Please. Now, a very good example, which is what we are here to do. Like I said, I'm going to do examples. We are going to have some classwork. We are going to attend to. Now, they said use the what the phase what combination to com component that are in different phases to combine this. Now, I don't think there's anything to do here. Use slash for for components that are in different phases. Now, AG AG solid give AG plus and uh, CL give CL minus. I hope you remember the, the left side is always the anode, the right side is always the cathode. And you know that the one that will be here will be the one that is more electropositive. That is what we have been talking about. Also, you should understand why we are here. I'm not here to run and waste my time online to teach you, but to make you guys understand what I'm here for. So please, let's take it in, in our mind. Now, here, what we are talking about here is that silver, silver solid was deep into solution and gave us, this is the one supplying and this is the one gaining. And we combine them together by the salt bridge. You can see that is the salt bridge. So the same thing to the second phase. Now this is the one supplying, then this is the one uh, then it was connected by the salt. These are the phase, single stroke at the phase. It changes from zero to one, and here it changes from what? Zero to what? Negative one. So all those things are. So they, use, they say use double comma, like that particular, use comma, I said double comma, use comma for components that are not in the same phase. 
if they are not in it, you can see this and this are in the same phase. After writing them, I'm separating them by what comma. But look at this now. If they are not in the same phase, I will use double, I will use a, a comma when they are not in the same phase. Watch. I have graphite, this graphite I've written here. One need to understand that graphite, graphite is the electrode that was used. That is why I told you it can be at that side or at this side. Far left or far right. That is one thing. Now let's see, talking about same phase and not in the same phase. Now I minus is iodide ion, then to I I2, then the salt bridge. You can see. Then look at the second stuff. You need to understand the second first stuff. They are not in the same phase. Look at this. We have hydrogen ion and we have manganese. This is MnO4 minus. You can see this one and this one are not in the same phase. That is why they are separated by a comma. So please note that you can see they are separated by a comma. We are as when we are writing this and this, no comma is in between all this stuff. Please note that Cl2 is here. When we are writing this, after writing the first one and the second one, we put a comma because this particular element at the at the cathode side are not in the same phase. Please be careful about that. Writing them is very simple. Write their state of change. Write the cathode. Write the anode first. Combine it with the salt bridge. Write the cathode. So, in fact, most of the time, one molarity, one molarity, one at one atmospheric pressure or whatever. These are conditions for standard hydrogen electrode, which I'm still going to talk about in this slide. The next one is. Now, this first example we have here for you guys to see is what? A very, a very simple equation which was given for us to write. Now, I will give this example only. Then, other example will be attempted by you guys. So please note that. So okay. So let's see. Now the first example I'm doing like we have this equation. The first thing is for me to know the one that oxidized and the one that reduced. I know very well as a matter of fact that the one that oxidized will be here at the left and the one that reduced will be there. So now this is the oxidation phase. So what am I going to write first is from here copper solid slash move to what? Copper two plus. That is the first thing I will write. Can you see? at one molarity, that's the concentration. Then I will now combine it with the second one, which is the reduction phase, by using the salt bridge. And the second phase is this one that I reduce from that point to this one, you can see, from that point to this point. If you now, if you see this, I said this is wrong. And why is this wrong? It's because I am writing this particular, what? This particular concept. The number of moles, what do you call it? Please note that. That is why this is wrong. So now, when you are writing, you neglect the numbers of moles. So that's another important thing you can keep in mind. You don't need because the equation is performed at one polarity. Please note that one moles per dm. So the next one, the next one, 25. Now, this is the first exercise we are going to do. It's more like it's what we've talked about. Now, just get the one that is what? The one that is uh, oxidizing and the one that is reducing, you know, if something is oxidizing, and if it's the one that you want, we supply should be this guy. Because this will be at the left hand side. So, what you expect to write, you know now, should be, it should be AL. I'm not going to write this again for you. AL solid is giving you, a bit, is the one that is giving you AL3 uh, plus, will be the one on the right hand. You know how to write that. So please note that. So you are not going to use this arrow. You know what you are going to use. You are going to use a single AL solid. Then you have uh, two AL three plus A plus. Then connect it with your salt. Maybe this double arrow. Then you write the second one. CR three plus A plus. You can write at one molarity. is important if you want to write. And if you don't want to write, it's not a big difference now. So note that. And you are to attempt this and let me know your answer. The next one. I still have a long way to go. Now, the exercise two you have is write the anode and cathode after reaction and overall reaction. Like what I expect you to let me know is that which one is the anode, which one is cathode. You know the anode is always the one at the left hand side, and my cathode is the one at the right hand side. So for example, this is the anode equation. This is more electropositive, and this is the cathode equation. And you combine them together, which is the whole thing that you have. You know what they mean by writing that? You know, if you write A L3 plus solid, let me show you. 
So if you are writing, sorry, A L, you to just name that. So we are talking about um, if we have uh, this is a uh, A L solid, and it's giving us a uh, let's say A L three plus. That is, you have plus uh, three E minus. I hope you understand that's what they mean by that. I mean, this is what is happening at the end of it. But if you want to write the second one, the cathode, that's the one of lead, it will be the opposite. What's PB2 plus? This is what we've talked about today. PB2 plus AQ, or space put AQ here, is important. This one will now give you the, what, the opposite of what we have. It should be what? PB, PB plus uh, 2 E minus. So, so this is the half cell reaction. Then the overall reaction will now be the combination of this now. So you now start writing, you write the first one, AL solid. I just want to do this one for you. It's an exercise. Then slash uh, AL3 plus, you write in bracket, one molarity, and put a cross, please. Then salt bridge is ready there. Wow. So you have salt bridge. Then you have uh, the rest here is uh, then you complete PB2 plus and PB2 plus uh, slash PB2 plus one minus slash that. That's the overall reaction. This is the overall reaction written for you already. So they want you to write it here. And that is expected. So that's that, guys. Next one. We are almost there. Then the next one is now where we are going. That is the aim of this lesson I said at the beginning is how to calculate the standard electric potential of a cell and that is why we are here now so far so good we've learned about uh, how a cell is being constructed how a governing cell is being constructed and how to write some half cell equation now if you want to calculate the standard electro potential there is one thing you might have studied in your physics sorry i have to go to this bit of physics now if you have a simple cell maybe i should quickly talk about that sorry i just have to talk about something before it's not about just reading what I have here, you know me very well, I don't want fancy in that. So if I have uh, a simple cell, let's say I have a simple cell, a simple cell in physics, let's just say we have this simple cell, now positive and negative, then I, I connect this to a voltmeter or a voltmeter or galvanometer or any form of meter you want to use. Then I want to calculate, let's say we have two terminal points A and point B. Then the question is, there is no way I can calculate the amount of voltage that flows through A only. Now in physics, what we calculate generally is the potential difference between two points. Now, we can only say the potential, if we say the, the battery is a 5 volt battery, for example. So what we are trying to say is that the difference between the potential of VA minus VB is equals to what? 5. Nobody can tell you that the amount of potential that will flow through point A is equals to 3 and the one that will flow through point B. We are looking, we can only get the difference in potential between two. That's why they call it potential difference. I'm trying to introduce you to this topic in a special way that you're going to make you what that you're going to make you love what understand the concept. Now, the only way we can calculate the potential at A is now by connecting this particular thing to a reference to the grant. The reference we use in physics is mostly the grant. That is what we call the point of reference. There will be a reference frame. That is the way we so we say. The way we call it in physics. Most of you are like, what? You are, in, you are used to my class, you understand very well what I mean by reference frame. Let's focus on this. Now, if we are talking about reference frame, wow. So, if we talk about reference frame, we need to understand a lot of things. Sorry, guys, we are still in class. We just have a, a kind of, a, I call it a mayhem. Maybe not a problem. So now, guys, I'm back. So now, if we now want to calculate, we now need to connect this particular thing to, let's say, the art. Oh, call you guys know this thing very well. If it is the grant. So we now take the reference point, which is the grant, as what? Zero potential. So we now say the potential of A 
with respect to the grant. Now, now we now say if this one is now zero, we can now say if with respect to we can now say V B V A is now equals to five plus zero, whatever. So what we are trying to say now is that when we want to get the potential difference of a particular point, we need a particular reference. And that is the exact thing that happened in cell. Now, if we want to get the potential difference that flow through a particular cell, half cell, we need a particular reference frame. And that reference, which will be the source of our point of measurement, is called the electrode potential. And that is what we want to talk about now. So let's see to understand better from what we have actually given to you. Let's read through this. We say the measure of what? The ability of an half cell to attract electron towards its standard state. Now, what is the standard state? Because this one, I think, came out in NECO this year, where they ask you that, what is the, I think, no, WAHEC, Objective Chemistry, available on this particular channel here. We talk about uh, the standard state of what? On how to construct a standard electrode potential. A very good example is the standard hydrogen electrode we are going to talk about soon. Now, it must be what? At, we say NTP, one atmospheric pressure, of 180 m. It must be what one the concentration must be one molarity, and the last one must what the, we also have two hundred and seventy three kelvin or whatever. Please note that. So this is the standard state. Now the magnitude of electrode of electro potential depends on the tendency of the metal or the non metal that losses electron. So generally we write. Please listen to this formula. I know you've come across this many many times. The standard EMF of a cell is always EMF standard. Please we will write it. You can see that's the way you see it anywhere. Can be written as uh, for an half cell is always like I said is I always love writing E left my own way minus E right. I'm still coming to somewhere. So now you need to be careful about this. So that is how we calculate the standard EMF that flow through a particular cell. So note that. So if you want to write the standard EMF of an half cell, this is the unit, the notation will be different. Standard EMF from an half cell. So it depends on two things the electron that flows through the anode and the one that flows through the cathode. Next one, I mean, let's move forward. We're almost at 27 or 57. So now, as we have talked about before, this is it. Electrons start coming out here. They're measured by a voltmeter. Then, then you can see this is the convention of movement of electron connected by a short bridge. So, electron flow from anode, which is from here. To the cathode because there is a difference in electrical potential between the electrode. That is what I just explained to you in terms of physics now. Now, next one, please, I've been not to talk about here. The next please, 29. Now, a very good example. Now, this is a good example. We have zinc phase and copper phase. Zinc and copper two ion. Now, electron flow from what zinc to copper. We've talked about that. Now, if you want to write the reaction, we know how to write half cell reaction. Look at zinc solid turns a cross by what? Losing two electrons. How about copper? Did the same thing, you can see copper solid now here, copper aqueous also losing two electrons. Now, I said it is impossible to measure the absolute value of electrical potential directly. Exactly what I tell you, you only measure the difference. So, the standard hydrogen electron we call she, where will they go? is used as a standard reference to measure the electrical potential of the other half cell. You know, we are combining two half cells together, we have been using zinc and copper right from the beginning today. Now, if you combine that, we now want to know the standard electrode. We want to know the, the electromotive force or the potential difference. Let me put it like that. Let me go into electromotive force. But basically, you can say electromotive force and potential difference are more of the same. Am I communicating? So, now, if you look very well, my dear student, what I've said in your physics knowledge is also applicable in the world. You cannot just measure directly the standard PD of an half cell without having a reference frame. A reference, a point of reference, is now what we call the standard hydrogen electrode, which we call she. And that one we have a reference of what is 0 0.004. Just like I told you, we use grand in physics as our point of reference. Are you understanding this now? So the standard electrode potential of an hydrogen electrode, she, is now. So if we want to calculate the that of the half cell, we say the general EMF will now be equals to that of the what half cell minus that of she. I'm still coming to that. Admit, please. Next page. Now, the next page now talk about what we talk about now the construction of she. 
and uh, when I say she, I mean standard iron electrode. It contains a platinum electrode. Now, platinum electrode that is dipped into one molarity of what a metal. It can be an acid, it can be any acid, but we use hydrogen ion. It was what the condition is one mole per DMP of what any strongest, but basically we use what H plus or what ozonium ion through which hydrogen gas at 180 and I told you is bulk. So the condition for S and for she is one molarity 180 m. Follow this, and also you can say it's also what contains what hydrogen plus aqueous solution that is given what into hydrogen. Hydrogen gas. So this is a very simple construction of she, as you can see. Then it contains platinum electrode. It's an example of a nat electrode that does not take part in the reaction. So please keep it in mind that there is a reference made, and the standard electrode potential is always taken to be zero. Reference point is always zero. Next, I mean, nothing to talk about here. Now, example: determine the standard reduction potential. Very good. Standard operator of zinc metal she as the cathode. Now. These are things we are talking about. Now, this is it. There are two half cells that are connected together by a short bead that is placed by what? That is placed where the voltmeter is reading is 0 0.76. That's the volt. I say voltmeter. Voltmeter, please, not voltmeter. Voltmeter measures the 2D. So now, it's voltmeter for potential event. So now, the standard LED, what hydrogen electrode, which is the reference point, is now. Initial frame is what is zero. So if we want to get this now, it's not very simple. We can calculate the what the electrode what the reduction potential of zinc in this particular. We can calculate for one cell because we have a reference frame now. So that is what I explained the other time when I was giving you the illustration on how to calculate a particular potential at a particular point. So it can be either at the anode or the cathode. In as much you are taking a reference, you can calculate the amount of potential difference at one point. I mean, yes, I have to save time. Yeah, we need to move. Now, a very good example. Now we have started. Let's see this. A very good example is uh, what we've been talking about, zinc and what. And uh, we are actually having zinc solid turns to what? The phase transformation to zinc 2 plus. Then uh, it is now connected with uh, standard hydrogen electrode. is the one that has hydrogen ions that is turning towards hydrogen gas. So this is it. Now, which platinum electrode was it? So this is she, standard hydrogen electrode. So for what this is she, let's try the after equation, which you've known before. This is the one supply, and this is the one that is gained. So from Zn2 plus, at Zn, Zn solids to aqueous is going to lose to electron, whereby this particular aqueous to form hydrogen, this one is gaining two electrons. So this one cancel this out. Then the overall reaction you know very well. Zn solid plus 2HCO. Zn solid plus 2H plus aqueous. This part. I'm writing this part first. But I don't want issues. Now giving us Zn and see Zn2 aqueous plus hydrogen. This is the overall reaction. So when you ask to write overall reaction, please balance the redox reaction of that particular house. How do you balance? You know how to write this. And about the other one is the other way and you know what I mean by other way. And this is hydrogen plus. You can see H plus forming H2. That means it has so this one will always comes with each other. The overall reaction will be the one at the left, write it together, the one at the right, write it together. The next one, please. Now this one is where we are going. Now generally we say like I said I think I've done this one before. I say it's always what E right minus E left. So what I do is what the right hand side minus what the E cathode minus so the overall cell reaction for a cell overall EMF is always E right minus E left or you said E cathode minus E anode E cathode you know cathode is here anode is the first one the one that so far. E cathode minus E anode so always keep that in at the back of your mind which is same thing as saying now you can see it is simply saying e for what the she minus that of what because what we connected now we connected she towards the what towards the what right so always keep that and i told you the essence of getting of connecting she is to be able to determine the particular emf or voltage that is flowing through one part normally we cannot calculate 
the what the EMA that is flowing through one half reaction. It is when you connect it with a reference point. At me, am I communicating? So now always keep that in mind. So look at this now. We are given this one that the overall was uh, 0 0.76, if you remember. So for this standard hydrogen electrode, is always taken to be zero. Now I can get the one for this. So always keep it in mind. You can connect she to the right or to the left. It is the reference frame is always taken to be zero volt. That is key point. So all these are uh, my saying that I've been saying this morning is to know that to determine the EMF of one half cell, you need standard hydrogen electrode, which contain a platinum, right? A platinum electrode, and also what you say, we have what uh, hydrogen ion that is dipped in what hydrogen what hydrogen hydrogen ion, ozonium ion that is dipped in hydrogen gas, and you know the condition of one atm. When I say one atm, you know the meaning of one one atm. When I say in what one molarity of concentrate concentration. So keep this in mind. It's simple. E right minus E left. So this is the way we do that. Next one is now other option. Like I said at the beginning, is I'm not going to talk about this other option because it's not popular yet. Most of you are used to what the basic option of calculating, which I don't want to cause confusion. So I will always give you the one I've explained to you. So let's move on again. Don't let us use this other method. It is optional, so I'm not going to talk about it. Now, determination of what standard reduction potential of copper metal. Now, before you can use the formula we talked about that, if you want to get the overall EMF of a cell, it is always, uh, let's say the overall, it's always E right minus E left. So if you've known this, if you follow the same process, look at now, you are connecting this guy towards what the sheet is connected towards the what? Left hand side. So we follow the same principle of what we did now. This is the overall stuff. So if we are if you are connecting this thing to the right, you know what it means. When we connect it to the left, it is that particular one minus that of she. But this time around, you are going to see what the same process is just the reverse of that. Please next day. I want to save time. I still have a long way to go. Now look at this now. A very good example is this now. This is the she that is connected towards the right. And this is what? Copper. So here the aim is to determine the standard hydrogen order to determine the EMF or the potential of copper in what? Copper half reaction. Please note that. Now let's try the half cell reaction. We know how to do that. We know that hydrogen gas, because it is at the right side, it is the one supplying now. Hydrogen gas, this is it. That is 2H plus plus 2E minus. Please note that H plus 2E minus. Then the other guy which is a uh, copper we now add as just as the opposite of what we did when we did for that. So remember overall reaction will be writing this one and this one at the same side. And writing this one and this one like that. So the gas turned towards aqueous. Here the aqueous turns to solid. So note the reaction process. So in some times we have you are writing overall cell reaction. This is the way you are expected to write that and combine them together. Then we use the normal formula in the next slide. 37 or 57. Now the normal seminar is always the standard EMF of a cell is always E cathode minus E anode. Then remember that our cathode is standard what hydrogen and sorry our anode this time around is what because we connect it towards this side is our standard hydrogen electrode which is she which is 0, 0.0. Yield of the cell was given to be 0 0.34 from beginning. So we are looking for the one of copper minus this at the end of the day. This will be the answer. So the formula that carry all the money here is this one, which is what that. So the essence of she is to determine what to determine the what EMF for the potential difference of one half half step. The next one. I think you guys are actually getting this because you need to understand this optional method. I'm not going to talk about it. Next admin. Thank you very much. Standard electrode potential table. Now this table is just. A kind of thing, like I do say, when I teach in offline classes, it's not that needed. Hope I'm still within the one hour range. I've passed the one hour range, so I don't want to pass one and a half hours. Please let me increase my pace. I'm still within that range, so I will increase the pace now. So, guys, each half cell reaction is written as a reduction form. That's always what I always test to. Now, that formula of our E cathode minus E anode, you can see I'm back in there. So, that E cathode minus E anode always work only if the reaction is in reduction. Form. So note that can occur in either direction, either forward or 
backwards. So it can either be so know how to write over and send the action. That is the one that is what gaining and the one that is what losing. You know what I mean by that. Know the state, balance the redox reaction. How do you balance by the number of charge on it? Standard hydrogen electrode one is very simple. You understand hydrogen is two, so two will come in front. You definitely know that they will cancel out each other, balance it together. That is just that. Next one I'm doing. Let's move up. Was this I'm seeing some now. This is a table. The only thing I would teach in this table is just two things. The first thing is that keep it in mind the more positive, more positive the charge. These are things I do say. When the charge, the more positive the charge, that is one thing. The more the E naught. That is the electromotive force. And the more negative, the, so we will say the more positive the, the, the charge, the more positive the E naught. When I say E naught, that means the more positive what the what oxy the shot. More positive oxidation, more positive charge, more positive E naught. Then the second point is uh the more yeah now the more negative, more negative the charge. The more reduction. So when you have more ne what negative charge, more real reduction, more positive charge, more what oxidation. More positive of E naught, the higher tendency of reduction. More okay in terms of cathode and anode, I can also do it like that. But I think this is better. More positive the charge, the more the oxidation. More negative the charge, the more the reduction. Let's just take it like that. You know definitely that oxidation will take place at the what? At the anode. And reduction will take place at the cathode. So if you want to learn it like this, it's still the same thing. More positive the E naught, higher tendency of reduction. That is at the cathode. That is, you know, cathode, definitely at the cathode. Cathode is set to what? The point at which what reduction takes place. So the more positive the what? The cathode, the more positive what? The tendency to work for reduction to take so that is if you have higher something that has high positivity at the cathode that means it has high tendency to reduce more then if you have more they are talking about anode and cathode now these are giving you i think it's better because it's this is only focusing on each compartment for example if i have cl minus and c and i have cl i have cl minus and i have a uh, br br2 minus or let me just give you a very good example from what we have there Okay, maybe I have a Cu2 plus and Ag plus. Now, I expect Cu2 plus because the charge on Cu2 plus is plus 2. So, and I know Cu2 plus will definitely move toward, it depends on the other, if it is at the cathode, I get in a cathode reduction will be more what, it will be what, it will, it will reduce more than Ag plus. Why? Because plus 2 is more than plus 1. That's what we are talking about. The next one, please. What is it talk, talk about? Now, when you reverse reaction, that's another thing I will talk about when I start work example. When you reverse reaction, the sign will change. That's another important thing. Now, standard cell potential, difference in electrical potential of electrode measure at a specific temperature, usually 298. This is the third condition. Apart from one molarity, one bar, and it is also at room temperature, 298. At that point, we'll talk about electrical potential, which we call E not of itself. Please note that. Now, also known as voltage or, you know, I've been calling it EMF or electromotive force. Now, SI unit of cell potential is volt. One volt is one just per coulomb, and coulomb is a unit of electric charge. We are not doing physics here. We can next to the next one. Thank you. Now, a very good example, the first one I will do today, I'm almost there, which is our stock we've been talking about zinc, copper, blah, 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 zinc. So we have uh, the reaction like that. The overall reaction is given what the standard EMF of this cell or the standard potential difference or whatever you call it is 1.1. So, and the second one we have, the second reaction, the standard this thing is uh, 2.1. So let's keep it in mind. Next admin for the solution. Now, please move. I don't want to waste time. Now look at this first exercise. Calculates the standard uh, Electric potential for the following reaction. We've talked about this. I don't think this one everybody knows it will be what E left minus what? Sorry, E right minus E left. 
E, right, right, is E reduction minus what? Oxidation. There must be in the reduction form. You know what which one is reducing and which one is oxidizing in this reaction. You know how do you know? Because you know zinc is more electrical. Zinc will be at the left and this one will be at the right. The next one, try that. So now the next one is also more of the same place. This one is the same question. You are calculating the what standard cell potential of this cell. Just make sure you understand which of them we be at the left hand side and which is going to be at the right hand side. You can actually know that from this particular reaction. So the one that is turning from solid to aqueous and from aqueous to solid. I think this is the overall reaction and this is the cell reaction. You are just subtracting two things from each other. E right minus E. If you know the one that will be at the right hand side and the one that will be at the left hand side. The next one is because of time and this is the last one you are going to attempt. A voltaic cell house a, a voltaic cell house is the reaction between apologies aqueous bromine and zinc metal. This is it. So you have to find the half cell. Okay, we are giving this equation. We are calculating the what the cell potential of uh, between Br two and Br minus. Given that the one of zinc is uh, this, and the overall cell is having one point three, so it is more of the same place. They are from the same concept we have talked about. Let me see what you understand and drop your answer. So please forty seven. Thank you very much. So basically, releasing strength of oxid oxidizing and what. Reduction. This is just more like simple concept. Now, I do tell students refer to the list on the standard electro potential oxidizing agent on the left side, on the left side of the cell equation. Oxidizing agent is always here. How? Because they are the ones that what are reduced. Now, reducing agent on the right side of the half cell equation. So when you write half cell equation, you expect oxidizing agent to be at the left hand side and reducing agent to be at the right hand side. Look at this half cell equation here. This is this guy here are oxidizing agents and this guy here are reducing agents. Please always keep that in mind. Oxidizing agent are on this side, reducing agent are on this side. Next one. This next one, I don't want to talk too much about table, it's not even showing. Let's see. Now, a very good example. Now talking about the strength, which I've talked about that the other time. That one is telling you about the strength. I think I've talked about this. Now just look at if you want to know the strength of each of the meta. Look at their chart. Now, if somebody is asking, out of these three, which one has the greatest strength? It's very simple. The, this is having the highest positive value of E0. The one that has the highest positive value of E0 we have the greatest strength. Then followed by 0 is greater than minus 0 0.76. So your mathematical skill is needed here. So note, the more positive value, the more strength. The stronger the word, the more oxidizing power. The more positive, the more strength. Then we have uh, the other one is that uh, the the more negative value the what the more what the more strength to reduce more positive more strength to oxidize more negative more strength to reduce. So the next one I admit admit this next one let me close this the next one we have uh, it's an exercise that you guys are going to attempt, talking about uh, which one have the more reducing, what more reducing agent. Look at the negativity. So I read them for me. Also drop your answer. I don't want you to have any issue. So just focus on the test. We are reducing agent. Reducing agent to use the concept of the more negativity. The one that has the more negativity will be the more what. So follow the negative sign will be the most reducing. Agent. Next one is an exercise I'm not supposed to do. Basically, what we have to the molecular bromine is added to the solution containing chloride ion at that temperature, as well as species are at their standard cell. So it's just about comparison of their of their values of E not two. So attempt that as well. If you have any problem with them, answers are available. Don't worry. The next, if we have now talking about, we also use the standard EMF of a cell, the E not to actually determine whether the action is spontaneous non-spontaneous or at equilibrium. So we do tell students that if the overall reaction is what greater than zero, it is said to be spontaneous. If the overall reaction is less than zero, it is said to be non-spontaneous. And if the overall reaction is equal to zero, 
the cell to be at the wave. You know. So spontaneous, greater than zero, non-spontaneous, less than zero, and equilibrium is equal to zero. So exercise you follow. So which are what you should be example. I don't need to disturb you, you guys. So the value are going to be used to determine the spontaneity. I think this is quite easy, just like the other one. Is it spontaneous? Is it not what? Is it not spontaneous? This, you know, this, you know, the value, this is plus one, is greater than zero. This is also greater than zero. So you should be careful about numbers that are less than zero. When we talk about greater than is always spontaneous, less than is not spontaneous. Next one. So thank you very much. Exercise, please attempt all these exercises. It's for your own good for me to know if you get the topic very well. This is about spontaneity. And this is the last one. I think this is the last one. So make sure you drop your comment. This type of uh, slide presentation are for our paid courses. Never we take it from the scratch. You can see the way we have tried to analyze everything in this video. And this is where I will be stopping. If you are new to this channel, you can consider subscribing to the channel and do drop your comment and what and uh, your likes because this is what keeps us going. See you guys soon. Do have a wonderful time. Bye for now.